Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hard to believe that uh, we're at game 12 in the last uh, regular season game. Uh, really excited about this week uh, to get an opportunity to go uh, to Iowa State. It's going to be a great environment, great atmosphere. Uh, game has meaning. Um, I thought, uh, going back and look at the film, I thought our guys played really well on Saturday uh, in all phases. And uh, getting off to the fast start was important. I thought we dominated the uh, the defensive line against their offense line up front to be able to shut down the run. And then I thought uh, our offense played really well. I thought we, we played really well in the old line. Um, we, we blocked really well at wide receiver and, and tight end. And then uh, we're able to rush the football uh, with great success with our running backs and, and with the quarterback, uh, which opens up a lot of things. And um, when you're able to do that, and, and the other thing is, is we didn't turn the football over, which is huge. Um, and uh, we were able to get one big turnover for those guys. And then, you know, we were two for two on fourth down with two really good calls by Coach Riley, and some kids made some plays, and they were 0 for 5 on fourth down in critical time. So that's another five turnovers that uh, were impactful. So excited. We had really good energy, good focus. And now we've got to put it together and go to Ames. Did moving Riles down to the sideline have the intended effect? Absolutely, it did. I thought there was really good. I knew there was going to be good energy on senior day anyway, but just hearing the conversations, the communication um, with the offensive line um, and Coach Riley, I thought was really good. But I, I just thought the offensive guys in general on the sideline were really locked in and in, in tune with what was going on. And we had a lot of really good conversations um, that I think typically take place. But when your OC is down on the field, I think it even makes it more valuable. Yeah, and that. I don't know, kind of connect him to the game a little bit better. When you're in the press box, it's almost like you're not connected to the well, game. Well, especially somebody like Riles that, that is, you know, um, has that much energy and um, can get guys going uh, with his juice and energy and um, without a doubt. Um, you know, some guys can like to do it from one spot or the other. I know there's some challenges doing it on, on the field and calling it, but uh, um, we had good information we were getting upstairs. And plus just those – just having the iPads and you can go back and watch the video, um, that that helps a bunch to have a coordinator. You know, it's like Joe, that's helped him a bunch. Having I can actually see it rather than us trying to count on a player telling us what happened or kind of guessing when it's going really fast. That Those iPads have been a, a real game changer in college football. Did the defense do anything different on third down or fourth down? Or were they just more – No, I just think it? we had really much better technique – and uh, we were able to get the quarterback off his spot. Um, and, you know, a couple times they threw it at our best corner. And Jacob Parrish just locked people down. And that was uh, that was really good as well. But, uh, no, I just thought we had really good intentionality on defense and, and really good focus. State's one of eight programs in the country with at least eight victories over the past four seasons. The others are Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, Notre Dame. Ohio State, Ole Miss, and Oregon. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Last year there was 11. Did you knock three off? What do you attribute to K State's <laughs> success? <laughs> um, uh, I'll tell you something. It's something as as a staff and a, and a program uh, we're really proud of because it's hard to win college football games, and I know that uh, um, you know you're expected and and you want to win every game. It, it's difficult to win, and, and uh, so the stability that that uh, our staff has brought here, and to have that sustained success, uh, tells you an awful lot about the the players in the program, the men that are leading these guys. Um, that uh, every week uh, it's it's tough to win, but our guys are going to be prepared every week and um, have a chance to be successful. It it, it means a lot to me. Um, it means a ton to me, D. Scott, to, that, to say that we've won eight games another year. Now we need to try to get to nine and try to get to ten, but that's a that's a huge thing um, to know that we're doing it the right way and with the right guys on the field, uh, with our players and with our staff. The story of 2024 is is not complete, and there's still more to be written mm -hmm. about it. How would you describe the journey to this point, and what has pleased you the most? Um, resilience. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty easy in the fact of you can't always replicate it. But if you don't turn the football over on offense, and you're able to get off the field on third down, 
you have a chance to win an awful lot of games. And in the games that we have not had success, you can look at those two areas and say third down defense maybe wasn't great or we turned the ball over on offense. Uh, and in the games that we've been successful, uh, and guys, you know, we know that Colorado is maybe ranked, not ranked, to go on the road and win there was a really good win. I think everybody knows what KU's playing like that KU probably should have played early in the season. Well, we were the last team to beat those guys and beat them with third down defense, a big turnover stop, getting a, a big play. And then, guys, Tulane's going to win a lot of games. Tulane could be in, in the college football playoff. They, they've, they're a good enough team to be, in my opinion. And we go there and beat them at their place. And, and everybody was so mad that we played so poorly. Maybe they're pretty good. And maybe we had enough resilience and resolve to find a way to get that win. And so, um, you know, a lot of things even out over a season. But um, injuries play a factor, all that stuff. But the fact that uh, our guys came together and found a way to win at least eight. Now let's keep going. It seems every year you have a, a bunch of fighters on this team. Where does that mentality come from? Uh, it starts downstairs. It always starts downstairs on the first floor. It, it with our strength staff, with our nutrition staff, with our athletic training staff. Um, they demand an awful lot of those guys. They they get a lot from those guys because that group um, has the ultimate respect of our football team. You know, our athletic training staff, our strength staff led by Coach True, nutrition with Scott. That group down there has the ultimate respect of our players because they know they're going to do everything they can uh, to get those guys to be successful. And they don't want to let those guys down. Uh, our team doesn't. And, and you know, you go through a you go through a winter and you go through a summer with Coach True, you're going to be a tough kid. You got a lot of help. You could still make the Big Twelve title mm -hmm. game. Do you guys talk about that at all this week? Um, no, we we probably won't. I, I think kids probably know it. My only we nobody has any control over this. Uh, TV does, but that's the only thing that I don't like about it. Make all the games that are that matter at the same time. You know that that just seems to make sense. The NFL finds a way to do that. College football doesn't find a way to do that. That um, all of us should be playing at the same time. And I know there's Friday games. You can't change that. But on Saturday, put them at the same time. And um, but instead, we're still part of Pac-12 at night. It's just what we are. We should all be playing at the same time so that nobody can look at the scoreboards, nobody can know before you go into it. Um, that's that's unfortunate. We haven't figured that out. Do you have Dylan Edwards available this week? You know, um, he was going over to run this afternoon, and I think there's a, uh, a pretty good chance. I'll probably know more uh, on Thursday, but you'll never find out on Thursday. You know, um, but uh, I think there's a good chance we'll have Dylan, yes. A much better offensive line play this past week. Is that a product of Coach Riley being on the field or clean up the fundamentals? I think a combination of both. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I know that we need to be better in the offensive line, and those kids would tell you the same thing. But we're still averaging over 200-some yards a game rushing, and we're one of the best rushing teams in the country. And it's easy to, to pick on a group of people. Uh, and pick on a, a particular person here and there. Um, but um, w we're a lot better on that side of the ball than people probably give them credit for. And I know it's it's an easy one to put jabs at and stuff, but uh, we're doing some really good things. How's Cooper Johnson coming along? Um, he was limited, as everybody probably could tell, uh, last week. Um, didn't practice most of the week. We finally got him out there on Thursday a little bit. Um, so I think he'll be – I'm sure he'll be full speed because he didn't play that many plays. He played some plays, which I was glad he was able to play a little bit on Saturday. But he didn't practice on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of last week. Finally got cleared on Thursday. Um, and we needed to be cautious with him um, so we don't re-aggravate something. But I, I would assume he'd be, he'd be full go. So I'm not assuming anything here. Is Connor going to stay on the sideline for this next game? Yes. Um, and when you look at Iowa State in general, just what makes them a tough matchup year to year with, with Kayla running? They, they know us really well. We know them really well. They have really good players and they have really good coaches. Um, you know, from a, from a 
complementary standpoint, I think they've got the best wide receivers in the Big 12. Uh, those two kids uh, are phenomenal players and have been there for a while. Uh, I've always been impressed with, with the quarterback in, in back. I think he's a really good player. I've told Matt that before. I think that kid's a winner, and he's got a, a lot of moxie to him. He, he just makes plays. And they're a veteran offensive line, like – Every other offensive line we face, those guys are really good up front, got a really good run game, they, and they give you so many different formations. And then on defense, they're just sound. They, they're not going to give you an explosive play. They create turnovers, and you've got to earn everything that you get. And, you know, when we won there a couple of years ago, it was a low-scoring game, and both teams had to earn everything. And when we've got into those games with them, we've played well. When we've given up the explosive play to those guys, snow or no snow, but we've given up the explosive play. In 21, we gave up the explosive play to them and, and ended up losing the game. We have to eliminate the explosive play, and they've been able to get it on us. One more for me. Is there anything you can do to prepare for the cold heading into a game like this? Well, I could go to the press box like my old head coach did, Daryl Mudra. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, it's good that it's going to be cool this week. Uh, maybe not as cold as it, it's been, but with the technology that everybody has now with warm weather gear, um, heaters and stuff on, on the sideline, um, it, it'll be by far the coldest game we've played in this year. Same with Iowa State. But um, once you get going into it, it's, a, it's just another game, and um, I don't think there's precipitation. At least that's what my – People in Iowa have told me that I, that I contact quite frequently that they're not expecting precipitation uh, this week, which would be good. Uh, but, no, with all the heaters and all the technology, with the cold weather gear, um, yeah, it'll be cold. But it uh, both teams got to deal with it. I can't remember if we've ever asked you this, but two days before you play well, Iowa last State. Last week you asked me something I'd never thought you'd ask me either. <laughs> Fitz. Get ready, for, get ready for this one then. Okay. Uh, so – Two days prior is Thanksgiving, and that's a holiday of just stuffing our faces with food. Are you telling the guys, go ahead, eat all you want, or are you asking for discipline? No, on Thursday, they always do anyway. I mean, we're still two days away from it, so no, Thursday. Um, yeah, those kids need to spend some time uh, away or with families. We'll practice earlier on Thursday, give players an opportunity to go home if they can. That's a close, close drive. Um, take players with you. If you can, we'll have a Thanksgiving meal here um, for staff and whatever players can't. Um, and then they'll be back Friday morning if they want to stay overnight. It's it's time to be with family. And uh, we've done that every year that that uh, I've coached here. I've done it every year I've coached at another place. That uh, if, they, if you have kids that have the opportunity to get home, our encouragement is take, take teammates with you. And Iowa State's defense, they've been really good against the pass this year. What about their back end? stands out you know um they're veteran guys uh they've played an awful lot of football um you know they are a predominant zone team maybe they'll f switch it up and play a little bit more man but they've been a predominant zone team and when you do something a lot and really frequent you get really good at it uh and i just think that they know the weaknesses of whatever defense they're in but they know their strengths of it too, and, and that's obviously a really good strength is, is their pass defense. I was going to ask you about Spivey. Yeah. Is he, were you thinking that he was going to have this in him late? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Trey's a really good football player, and two things. One, just getting him up to speed on, on feeling comfortable and knowing everything with the playbook as well as – opportunity and because we have a, a number of wide receivers that uh, um, we knew his opportunity would come and it did and I, I'm not surprised with what we see out there at all because I see it in practice an awful lot and Avery's got a really good connection with him and I think that confidence that he has from Avery has made him even more confident and more comfortable playing um, and so yeah, no, he'll he'll continue to grow, and, and he's a redshirt freshman that uh, we're excited about. He's going to have a bright future, too, and the future's now. And Joe Jackson? Yeah, Joe, um, not having Dylan gave him more of an opportunity. Um, not sure if we'll have Dylan, but, um, you know, I, I think 
gave it to DJ 15 times, maybe 16 times, something like that, last Saturday. And um, as you get late in the season, you know, it's tough to carry it 25 times when, when you've done that at the amount of times he has. Joe is a really good compliment because he runs really hard. Maybe not as polished yet of seeing all the holes and seeing all the blocking schemes, but those reps that he's getting right now in practice and in games are going to help him in the future, and the future's now for him. I'm excited about Joe. Everybody in our team it respects the heck out of Joe Jackson by how he works in the weight room, how he works on the practice field, um, and uh, uh, I'm not surprised at all by what Joe's done. One more, I guess. When, when you started to think about moving Connor down, was it going to be LePac going up all along? I'm it was a conversation that Rouse and I had. You know, um, some of it is hard with substitutions, you know, because who's going to handle the tight end substitution? Who's going to handle the wide receiver substitution, running back, whatever it may be? And so that's the other reason we kept Drew Little down, because then Drew could handle some of the tight, tight end substitution. And let's be honest, we play a lot of those tight ends. And so we wanted to make sure and get into a good rotation there. Um, it's just something that I had thought about. Like I told you guys on Saturday, um, I'm always thinking of ways to, to – improve our team no matter how that is on the field off the field nutrition recovery whatever it may be that I never feel like um, we got to stop growing on that and so I brought it up to Riles and and just said I think this is going to help because to whoever I think Fitz asked it you don't get an understanding of what that sideline is like when you're up that high you just don't and I wanted him back into that element that um, kind of Riley's one of the best coaches in the country, no matter what position he's coaching. And it's fun to have him having that energy back on the sideline. Hindsight, how much did running Avery Johnson open things up last week? Uh, quite a bit. Um, and, you know, I think everybody knows we've talked about this a few times. Um, when you don't have a healthy quarterback, you need to be smart and not run him so much. And, there was a stretch there right after Colorado that he was not healthy. It's it's known that he wasn't healthy, and so everybody wants, why aren't you running him, why aren't you running him? Well, um, we can't get him hurt either. We can't have him out. Uh, so we were probably a little bit – we were smart with him uh, to protect him, allowed him to get healthy, and people saw when he's healthy – we're really good on offense. When he's healthy, we're really good because when you can pull the football, design runs or read runs, and you have to expand the field and not shrink it, when you expand it, boy, that opens up that run game with DJ quite a bit. And then all of a sudden it starts to open up some of the play action shots. Um, we missed one we, we thought was a touchdown, but we threw it, which was really good. And we threw a couple of deep crossing routes that was really good. It, it opens more things up. Some quarterbacks impact a team more than just offensively because their leadership and the way they play. And Rocco Beck strikes me as one of those guys. When he started playing last year, it clicked. Yeah. Uh, how good is he as a quarterback? Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, he, he makes them go. They've got really good running backs, tight ends. They always have really good tight ends and wide receivers. But he gets them in the right play calls. He uses cadence really well. People are jumping off sides on him all the time, so I know they're doing a good job with cadence. Um, they do a lot of trade shift motion, which shrinks that play clock, but you have to have somebody that recognizes. You can shift trade motion, but if your quarterback doesn't see what you did on the shift trade motion, it's kind of a waste. He can process things really fast. Shift trade motion, good, I see where I'm looking, whether it's a run this way, whether it's whether it's where I'm going with the football in a throwing game. Um, you, you can tell he's got a football pedigree with his dad and stuff. You can tell he's got a football pedigree. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know his leadership ability. Just can assume probably with that same pedigree that he's one of the best leaders. All games are important. The locker room gets fired up for Kansas. But does this rivalry with Iowa State, is it getting a little juice in the locker room? Yeah, um, it, it is. Um you know, it, it's, it's strange because it's another thing. Now, next year we're going to play them in the first game of the year. Um, and I think that will add something too because teams will be healthy. Um, it's not going to be either snowing or nine degrees. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I don't know what it's going to be like in, in, in Ireland, but I don't think it will be snowing. Um, 
no, I think it does have have really good impact. And just like it did in, in 22, but it was middle of the season. Everybody's still in – truly in the race and I know both teams are in the race now but it's just different um I don't know how I feel beginning of the season middle of the season end of the season with any of these games just because of how different college football is now and also uh, kind of a functional question here when you're uncertain about weather going on the road because I think precipitation might creep into the yep. yeah, how many different types of pieces of equipment shoes and do you need to take for yeah, I think we're taking a, a couple of trucks up there, you know, with cold weather gear to um, shoes to heaters and stuff. Um, and uh, we in the past, we've stayed in, in Ankeny, which is a little bit uh, closer to Ames, a little smaller community. We're going to stay in Des Moines, probably have a, a bigger hotel, more space, which if you play at 11 o'clock, it doesn't matter. If you play at 630, it's a big deal. It's a big difference when you're uh, when you're playing at night and having more space. And so... Um, you know, it, uh, and, and it's a holiday weekend, all those other things. There's a lot, there's a lot to it. Al's the best in the business. So he'll make sure everybody's outfitted well. And, and we have plenty of options. What is your message to the team this week? I haven't gotten there yet. D Scott, it builds, you know, um, you know, build on what we did last Saturday because we're a really good football team and we played stress-free. We played um, really free and the guys had a blast on the sideline and all those other things. We're going to build on that. So the practice is going to be a lot better. You know, it's when you, when you come off a loss, it's those guys are still beating themselves up and disappointed. We're going to have a really good week of practice and then we'll build towards the end of next week and, and I'll come up with the right things. There are nine teams potentially still could get into the Big 12 championship game, which is unbelievable. There's yeah. like 25 different pairings. Yeah. And one of them is Kansas State, Iowa State. I don't even know how that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does that just sum up this league? Yeah, it does. Um, it, it does. It uh, we're, It's a really good league. And, uh, and um, I know that you felt this as well. Other teams can leave lose in other leagues and it's it's that league's really good we lose in this league and this league stinks and I don't understand that as a conference we need to get together and figure some things out because for a bunch of teams to be nine and three and us not get any of those things in the college football playoff then we've got to cancel one of these games I don't care what people say we then go to eight games in in league play or stay with nine but play an FCS or play a group of five and I'd say, well, that would hurt you. I, I, don't, I don't care. You say what you want. Ten and two looks better than nine and three. And we're going to visit at this year's conference meetings and um, because we have to do things to benefit our league for the 12-team playoff, not to just benefit our league in general. And we need to be able to get two and three teams in the Big 12 or in the 12-team uh, playoff. The carnage that you're seeing – is going to allow for one most likely. I wish it would get two, but it's probably going to allow for one. We can control that. I really believe that. And we just got to get everybody on the same page and believe in, that we can control it. Because what's going on right now isn't fair to the Big 12. 